What's up, everybody? My name is Marty Griffin, and you are listening to or watching the Golf Strategy School podcast. This is the only podcast designed for newer golfers who are just trying to get over that hump of breaking 90 or breaking 100. If you're a listener and you have been a listener for a long time and you're wondering why I'm saying watching, well, we had several people actually ask that I turn these into video podcasts. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just recording as I'm filming. My new studio is my basement bar. And as I hit record here, it's like 5.15 in the morning, hence my coffee. And I'm hoping to just record this before the kids and the dogs wake up. So what I wanted to talk to you about today specifically is the new PGA driving data, the distance report that just came out. It's a great big long honking document, but I really want to call out one specific chart that should really inform you on how you play your game. Holy smokes, that's hot. All right, so this chart, and I'm going to put it up right over here. This chart really breaks down kind of distance by handicap. Now, for a lot of golfers, this, this might be a little heartbreaking to find out that you don't actually hit it as far as you think you do. But that's not really the the genesis and, and the takeaway that I want you to have. Um, you know, a lot of people they have a guess at how far they hit the ball and they know that that's a guess, but this will kind of show you how that guess is truly just that it's a ballpark guess that you have had. And in reality, you probably hit a fair amount shorter. Now this breaks down a subset of data. The distance report is all the stuff about PGA tour, LPGA tour, corn Ferry tour, Euro tour, Japanese tour, all these, all these different tour demographics. I'm not interested in any of that. I'm specifically talking about how amateur golfers, how far they hit, what type of impact that has on their game based on their handicaps. And really, this kind of comes down to, boy, I mean, I know that most of my audience is very similar to me. So in the the 30 plus range, do you guys remember those Be Like Mike commercials about Michael Jordan where it's like, I want to be, I want to be like Mike, like Mike. I want to be like Mike. Those commercials where it's like, hey, Michael Jordan, if I want to be like Michael Jordan on the basketball court, I'm going to have to act like him in my own daily life. I'm going to have to put more time into practice. If I want to shoot like Mike, I'm going to have to put the hours in like Mike. That kind of thing. This is really what I want you to take away from this. And so when we look at this chart, we can see that kind of overall amateur golfers as a whole, and this is amateur male golfers, average driving distance is only about 215 yards. Now that's not, that's not bad. That's right around what it's been for a long, long time. But when we start to kind of look at those different subsets of the data there, you know, we look at the 21 plus handicappers. So this is people who are kind of really, really on a consistent basis, struggling to break 90. Now, what they did is because that subset of data was smaller, the people who were north of 21 for a handicap, they were only, again, they're only looking at driver stuff here. They were only able to measure 60 total shots. So I, I understand this is a very small subset, but that average driving distance was 176 yards, which if you think about it, you know, if I'm struggling to break 90, if I'm really kind of struggling to get down around even 93, 95, then it makes sense that I'm probably having a hard time consistently impacting the ball. So if we have issues consistently impacting the ball, we're going to have an inconsistent output, which is the shot. So I can, to me, it definitely makes sense that we have a, a kind of drastically lower yardage on that 21 plus uh, side of the coin. Now, the other thing that I want you to look at is the percentage of the time that the driver was used. Again, this is looking at just par fours and par fives. So if we're playing 18 holes, assuming that there's four par threes, that means four, uh, 14 holes were driver eligible is how I'll say it. So of those driver eligible holes, 96.7% of the time, the person hit driver. What does that boil down to? That means once every 
other round, you decided to hit a club other than driver off the tee. Just to put it in perspective. Once every other round, you went with a shorter, safer, conservative shot. So that's for the 21 plus handicaps. For the 13 to 20 handicap range, we saw the driving distance jump up big time, right around 200 yards. And in there, we also saw the driver usage percent drop down to 89.3%. So if we want our handicap to be lower, and if we're, if we're talking about 13 to 20 handicaps, that is, you know, in all honesty, that's probably like the lion's share of the everyday golfer, the weekend golfer. 13 handicaps, they can put up some good numbers. They can shoot in the 70s. But they can also kind of trip over their own feet and shoot over 90. Not the end of the world, but it's a pretty wide skill range there. 20 handicaps, we're pretty much living above 90. We might have the you know the odd 88 pop in there somewhere, but you know we're experiencing a lot more blow up holes, so those scores tend to get north uh, pretty pretty quick. So this data is based off of 375 shots, but. 89.3% of those driver eligible holes are now only being used for drivers. So, you know, we're coming down about 7%. So that's, you know, it may not seem like a lot, but now that means that like once per 18, we are now choosing not to hit driver. If we look at the six to 12 handicap range, this is 499 shots worth of data. Average driving distance was 219.8 yards. So again, it makes sense. If we're having a lower handicap, it's because we're doing things more consistently so we can better predict the output so we can better adjust for that predictable output. And the only way we get predictable things if, is if we have a predictable, consistent impact on that club face. So it makes sense that we're seeing kind of like these leaps and bounds, these jumps in the driving distance. But what I really, really like to see, and this is the data point that I want you to keep watching, is the percent of the time that the driver is used. So we went from 21 plus handicaps using it essentially 97% of the time. Now 13 to 20 handicaps have dropped to 89.3% of the time. Now 6 to 12 handicaps are only using their driver 88.6% of the time. So kind of back to that, if you want to be like Mike, you got to kind of walk the walk and talk the talk like Mike, meaning if you want lower handicaps, the data is right here. Lower handicap players just flat out don't use their driver as much. It's what the data says. It's the PGA and the RNA put this together. I'm sorry, the USGA uh, and the RNA put this together. And then lastly, our last group is people who have a handicap under six. So I, I barely squeaked into that category last year. I, I had a hard time toward the end of the year. I finished with like a 4.8 or a 4.9 handicap. And this is very indicative of what I do. So, you know, average driving distance is only 239 yards. Mine's a little bit longer than that. Uh, average driver percent used 84.5%, the lowest out of all of them. Now, granted, this is only 207 shots again, because that, that data pool is smaller, so there's just not as much data to pull out of it. But out of 207 shots that they actually watched, there was an 84.5% driver usage, which now means that of those 14 driver eligible holes, we're up to about twice per nine, and then maybe even a third time, I'm sorry, not per nine, twice per 18, and maybe a third time every other 18th hole that we use a club other than driver. So once per nine, or you know, the odd time we're gonna be using it twice on on a side, something other than driver. Now for me personally, I'm I'm kind of stuck in two worlds about this because when you look at the data, especially the stuff like lowest score wins, that says bomb and gouge. That says the farther you hit the ball, the better off you're going to be. And you know what? For that subset of players, I agree. If you're a five or lower handicap, you know how to get out of trouble. 
you know that if you're in super deep rough that you can just take a wedge because you probably hit it farther. You can take that wedge and you can just maybe take an extra club, hit it out and onto the green. But for people who are on that higher handicap side of the coin, the skill set is not there yet. So it's not something that you can easily do. So what I want you to do is I want you to kind of honestly go back through your game. Just do a mental walk back through your game, maybe the last five rounds, if you can remember. And think about how many times you use driver off the tee and where you fall into that group. Are you part of the 21 plus group where it's pretty much every single hole that could have a driver, you do use a driver. You know, maybe once every other round, you'll pull out a conservative club. Maybe you're in that, you know, in that six or that under six handicap zone where it's like, you know what? I already play a very conservative game. And you know what? Shout out to the girls of Golfogram. We were talking about this on Instagram and they were saying that, you know what? They have already committed to that level of a conservative tee shot because they want to limit that risk reward. It's just too much of a risk compared to the minimal reward they get. So they are actually saying that they tee off with a five wood. Now, I do realize that if you want to have a different result, you have to do something different. But that is where you kind of have to do your own inner analysis, your own inner searching to see which part of your game needs that potential tweak. You know, for them, maybe it is time to start investigating driver. Maybe maybe two of the four par fives they play, they want to hit driver just to see how it changes their game. Does that extra 20 or so yards, does that maybe change the score because par fives are slightly more forgiving? I don't know. For other people, maybe it's the short game. And let's be honest, for just about all of us, it's the short game. So short game can be a huge impact on your overall score. That's probably where you need to spend more time, get a little bit more conservative off the tee, and then really polish that short game. Because you know what? Even if we look at all those driver eligible holes, all 14 of them, even if we look at that and we say, hey, we are going to commit. We know that we hit our driver 300 yards perfectly down the middle every single time. Dude, brah. If you're that person who does that, be someone else. At least be someone else if you're in my foursome. (laughs) Or keep those comments under your breath in a different cart or walk on the other side of the fairway from me. Because I don't enjoy that type of playing partner. But if, if you do have that game plan of just grip it and rip it every single time, what would happen if you sacrificed 30 yards, 20 yards of distance off the tee to know that you're going to find the ball every time. But then you took that time and you really polished your short game because even if you do grip it and rip it every single time where driver is a possibility, that's at most 14 times. I guarantee you that you use your short game way more than 14 times per game. And for the purposes of this conversation, let's call short game anything that's less than a full swing. So... If your shortest club goes 80 yards and your 60 yards are in, well, that's probably going to be less than a full swing. That's short game. Hey, guess what? Every single putt is short game. So you probably have three shots per hole that fall under that short game banner. So if we're hitting three shots per hole that fall under that short game banner, That is 18, 36, 54. That is 54 shots that fall under the short game banner compared to the 14 with our driver. So where do you think you should spend more time? That's that's a whole other side conversation. And if you want to talk to me about short game, I've got three fantastic short game lessons that I'm more than happy to share with you. Just hit up the link in the description and I'll I'll take you right there. But it's, it's really kind of that mindset, just slightly shifting our mindset little by little over time as to what the really important parts of our game are. So if you can kind of get into that mindset a little bit more, just, just change it by one iteration. If you use your driver every time, 
that's fine. Look at the shortest hole you're going to be playing and decide, hey, I'm going to use dry or I'm going to use a hybrid or a four iron or a three wood or a five wood, anything other than driver on that shortest hole and just see, just see what happens. That's all I'm asking. If you want to improve, if you want to move beyond where you are, something has to change. And if we kind of look at it from that, you know, kind of external perspective, what we did got us to here. And if we keep doing what we've been doing, we are going to stay here at this skill level, at this score range, at this handicap. If you want to lower your handicap, something, whether it's practice percentages, club usage, decision-making out on the course, something has to change. And this is a really way to just kind of tiptoe into that water and see exactly how it works out for you. So hopefully you enjoyed today's podcast. Hopefully you learned something from it. I thought the the driving distance, the PGA data was really fun to look at, but I, you guys probably already know I'm a numbers person. I mean, I, I got my, my little Doctor Who timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly saying right next to me, so you already know I'm a nerd. But you know, I, I don't want to make you read all 24, 15, 25 pages, whatever it was of that distance report. But I think there's some really good points that we can pull out of it. And that's really the biggest one for me. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you're watching on YouTube, Hey, let's make sure you get subscribed and you hit that bell notification. So you know exactly when the next episode's up. If you're listening, if you wouldn't mind dropping me a review on Apple podcasts or through whatever your podcatcher of choices if you're on android shout out to all my podcast addict users what what uh otherwise hey i will catch you in the short grass cheers <laughs> <laughs>